Hi. I often get asked whether these USB powered soldering irons are any good for general purpose soldering and if they'd make a good beginner soldering iron or sh whether people should stick with the more traditional soldering stations like the ones that we featured previously on this channel. And I've never actually had a chance to use one of these. This is the Miniware TS-80P and we're going to explore that today whether they can be used for general purpose soldering and how good they actually are. So this one was provided to me for this video by Ekins and on their AliExpress store they've got a few different variants available. Each has a different price level and it includes more or less accessories with each one. So the most basic just has the soldering iron, a single tip and the AC adapter. You can spend a little bit more and get a case and a little stand for it. And then if you buy the most expensive kit you get some additional soldering iron tips as well as uh, a bit of solder and everything like that. So this is a 30 watt soldering iron if your power supply is capable of providing that. You do need a USB power supply or power bank that supports power delivery 2 or quick charge 3. Otherwise the output power drops to 18 watts which again should still be more than adequate for most general purpose soldering. For many years I used an Antex soldering iron that was 25 watt constant power and that was pretty good for almost all the soldering that I needed to do. It just had no temperature control. This one adds quite a lot of uh, complexity really to a basic soldering iron. There's quite a few settings on here uh, and we will have a quick look at those functions today but ideally what we want to have a look at is just whether it will do the basic soldering task that we need it to do. It does come with an AC adapter uh, but one thing to bear in mind with an adapter like this that is just a class 2 device, almost all of these will end up with the output floating somewhere around the mid AC voltage although a very low leakage current just because of the EMC components that are inside this device you are going to see something like 90 or 100 volts on the soldering iron tip and that is why they provide this ESD cord and this connects to your ESD equipotential bonding point and then you can screw this little spade connector onto this screw at the bottom here and that will make sure that that isn't floating up at such a high voltage. Now in terms of safety this should have a very low leakage current, we're talking microamps but that may be enough to damage some very sensitive components like photodiodes and some LEDs and probably some ICs as well so you do need to be aware of that. Uh, if you have a PC that supports enough power then it might be worthwhile plugging it into there uh, because that's obviously an earthed USB connection rather than one of these class 2 devices. In the kit that I've been sent we've got three different soldering iron tips. I did have a quick look on eBay and AliExpress to see what other ones were available. There are I think two other versions available. None of the ones that I've been sent today are ideal for the type of soldering that I normally do. We've got a very pointy tip, we've got this um, angled piece as well and then we've got a a quite a wide spade tip here which is close to what I'd normally use it's just a little bit bigger than I would normally like to see. Something like one millimeter instead of this two and a half millimeters would be ideal but we're going to have a go at soldering some SMD components today with the kit that we've got here. Now to test out the soldering iron we're going to use these practice boards that I had made at JLC PCB and this can be a really cost effective way to build up your soldering skills without ruining some actual boards that you have for your projects. So obviously you can get your PCBs for $2 from JLC PCB, get some components, some surplus parts from eBay or maybe order some cheap parts from LCSC and just have a go at soldering things up. It doesn't matter if you mess up your practice board and you can just keep on practicing until you become really confident with your soldering. So we're going to try soldering up some of these parts today, probably one of these fine pitched parts as well with the tips that we've got here and see how it all turns out. Now the first thing to do with any new soldering tip is to tin the end to make sure that it doesn't build up an oxide layer. What you'll normally find is if you haven't tinned it properly the solder just won't take to the tip of the soldering iron and then you need to take some abrasive something like this brass wool and really give it a scrape and then you'll find that you're able to tin it again. So first of all just give it a quick clean in there the first time you're about to use it and then just coat the entire tip with loads of solder Give the flux a moment or two to work and then clean it off and you're ready to go with your soldering. Now it's been a while since I've done any soldering so let's see how this goes. We'll start off with some 0805 parts and we'll just tin the two pads here. Then we can place our part.
And the same once again. And then we'll just finish off the other side. And there we go. Could possibly use a little bit of flux just on this side to reflow these two joints here. But those have taken quite nicely. So obviously no problem for the 0805 parts. Let's try something a little bit bigger. It might be that this tip is a little bit too fine to get the heat in. But let's try it out anyway. So we'll apply a bit of solder to one of the pads here. Put the part down. bit on the wonky side let's try it again and there we go a little bit slow there let's try it with the bigger soldering tip and see if that improves things right so we've got the bigger tip on here now let's try again and that immediately flows a lot quicker. But it's just looking like this tip is going to be slightly too big for SMD work. Let's try this. And yeah, you can't quite get in there with this tip. It's a little bit too big, even though it gets the heat in there nicely. Let's try this big one at the top. Yeah, so a lot quicker, but they really do need a tip that's just between the two sizes because this one's just a little bit too big, the other one's too small, and I'm basically going to have to alter my usual soldering technique to account for the bigger tip if that's what we end up using. So let's try a different package. We'll apply some flux to the pads, and then we'll just tack it in place with a little bit of solder on a couple of the pins. And then we'll probably end up just dragging the soldering iron across some of these pins and see how that works. So let's try placing the solder across the pins and just dragging the soldering iron across. And it looks like that tip's a little bit too big for that technique. So we'll just drag it out from the IC out towards the PCB. And that's given us a nice finish on there. Let's try it again at the bottom. So that's not too bad there. Let's try with the other soldering tip. So this one is struggling a little bit. We've got quite a bit of ground plane here and it was struggling to take to that pad. So it doesn't look like this tip is going to work quite as well. Let's try individually soldering each pin. So yeah, this tip can't quite get enough heat into the tip. So even though it's set to the same temperature, you can see having a bit of trouble here melting that solder in a quick enough period of time to allow us to drag solder it. So this tip doesn't look like it's going to do the job for drag soldering like this. So I've swapped it out for the angled tip. Let's see if we can drag the solder across those pins. So that certainly gets the heat in there and has soldered those up quite nicely, not quite as well as the other tip. Let's just try on a fresh side and see how it beha behaves there. So I'll preload a bit of solder onto the tip and see if we can drag it out. And that's not too bad. Doesn't quite work as well as the first tip. There's probably not quite enough solder on there. That's a little bit better. So we'll try again with one of the finer pitch parts. We'll start with this angled tip on my preferred side, which is the right hand side, 
and see how we get on. It's not too bad. I'm not able to use my usual technique quite as much because none of these tips quite accept solder in the right way. So after a little bit of fiddling, I have actually managed to get fairly decent results from it after cleaning it up. It needed a little bit more flux on there and you did have to do quite a few passes. So really quite a nice soldering iron let down by the very limited number of tips available. I had a look online, it looks like there's five different versions available, but the other ones seem to be out of stock everywhere, so I wasn't able to get hold of one of those for this video. Certainly for general purpose soldering, for through hole work, and for SMD work if you're willing to put up with the fact that you're going to have to rework it a few times, then it does work, but I think it's more suited to occasional use and occasional repairs rather than replacing a purpose-made um, soldering station where you can get a huge number of tips available for every type of soldering job that you're going to do. It's quite compact and one thing that I do usually look out for is the distance between the grip and the tip. If you compare it to my Metcal station you can see I'm very close to the tip here which gives you a lot more flexibility and a lot more accuracy with your soldering but certainly it doesn't seem to be too bad here. It's a little bit longer than I would have liked, but still not unusable. Yeah, it's just really that those soldering tips are not really the most ideal ones for the type of soldering that we're trying to do here. I'll leave a link to the Ekins AliExpress store in the description down below if you do want to take a look at one of these. I am going to use this. This is primarily going to be my on-the-go soldering iron, so whenever I'm doing any work outside or at someone's house, then I'll carry this along with me and it'll mean that we can do some soldering a little bit better than what those gas soldering stations can do. Um, but yeah, quite a nice soldering station, just let down by the tips. Hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, thanks for watching.